Did you know that there is a devil fruit so powerful that Echiro Oda actually had to write it out of the story? Because otherwise it just would have broken the series. And it's not the only one either. As it turns out, the world of fruits can get surprisingly wild. And over the course of One Piece, Oda has had to remove at least six devil fruits for a wide array of reasons. And today I am going to serve you said fruits nestled tantalizingly under this silver dome thing. In the script, it's actually written a silver dome thing because I meant to look up the word, but didn't. Maybe I should look it up right now. Cloche, it's called a cloche. So if you didn't know that, you are now smarter. And if you did know that, then at least you're smarter than me. Everyone wins. With the exception of these six forbidden fruits, which were booted from the series, starting with the Konakonu no Mi, an unfamiliar fruit which was supposedly consumed by the more familiar name of Charlotte Kardakuri. I swear, the devil fruit controversy never stops with this guy. First, he's a Logia, then he's a Paramecia, and now he's well, it was never made explicitly clear. Kona could mean a whole bunch of things, such as powder, flour, or even meal. However, since Katakuri serves as the minister of flour, it's highly likely that this was supposed to be the flower flower fruit, which I imagine would have had to have been a Logia because that was the original intention of Katakuri. But also the nature of flour makes it very, very difficult to wield as any sort of solid bodily substance. Logically speaking, and yes, I am aware that I'm using the word logically to describe a 48 year old man made out of flour, but logically speaking, Katakuri would likely need some sort of external assistance to make the most of the flower fruit, like a stash of eggs in order to bind the flower, or maybe even the infinite egg himself, Baron Tamago. They would have made for a phenomenal duo. Every time Katakuri needs to engage in fight battling, he simply cracks a Tamago, douses himself in the weird viscousy goo, and then proceeds to annihilate his opponents with pure flower power. However, there are situations where Katakuri using the flower fruit alone would simply hard counter another. Unfortunately, those situations are primarily non-canon and mostly confined to the main villain of One Piece Dead End Adventure, Gaspade, who had a Logia type devil fruit that allowed him to become candy syrup. And in the end, Luffy was only able to beat Gaspade because Sanji did the cooking maths. Syrup plus flour equals solid. Therefore, Goofy Captain punches Ugly Marine in his well-rounded pig face. Here's the big question though. But first, it's dog time. Because this video is sponsored by Established Titles, a project based on a Scottish custom whereby landowners are referred to as lords, lairds, and ladies in English. In fact, my dog has recently become Lord Donkey Hote Dog Flamingo, and is currently being engulfed in both starfish and swamp. It's getting really hard to tell where one ends and the other begins. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Eddleston, Scotland. And with them, you can officially change your title to Lord, Laird, or Lady on credit cards and stuff. It's amazing. They make great last minute gifts and establish titles plants at tree with every order, working with global charities to support restoration efforts. Plus, I've been told that everyone who uses my link will get plots next to each other. So, so, so. We could even start our own funky Scottish grandline empire. Go to establishedtitles.com slash dogflamingo to shop their Black Friday sale and get an additional 10% off using code dogflamingo to support the channel and my dog's ego. Speaking of, Dogflamingo has used his authority as a lord to take command of the wetlands and has thus become immune to any kind of swamp. All hail your new lord. So do that thing, but for now it's back to you. Me? Here's the big question though. Why did Oda get rid of the flower fruit in favor of a mochi fruit? And I believe the answer is simply to make Katakuri's abilities more similar to Luffy's. Looking back on Whole Cake Island in retrospect, Oda did not have this brilliant mirror match in the mirror world in mind from the beginning. But as time went on, the idea took shape and Oda changed his character accordingly. To be completely honest with you, I am not even sure that Katakuri was meant to be the secondary antagonist. And my evidence for this is Katakuri's original design. Yes, this, this is Charlotte Katakuri user of the flower flower fruit and he's, uh, well, he's made some life choices. He looks a lot more like a throwaway Charlotte sibling design. Stacked up top, toothpick legs on the bottom with a cape and a big old sharp stick. There is nothing that anyone can say to me to convince me that Oda drew this and said, yeah, yeah, he's gonna be my main antagonist. But when Katakuri did eventually digivolve into his ultimate form, the flower fruit likely wasn't quite fierce enough to match the threat that Oda wanted represented here. Because it would have been like, watch out, Mugiwara no Luffy, it's your strength strongest opponent yet, Flower Man. Beware because he has the power of a polymer containing sugars, starch, and lipids, delicious lipids. Then again, Green Bull has proven in recent times that a Flower Man can be quite fearsome, so yeah, what do I know? And I actually think this would have led to an amazing, amazing character moment for Katakuri. Like his big thing was that his back had never touched the ground. So his catchphrase would have been, I will never fall because Flower's purpose is to rise because of, you know, baking. Anyway, our next forbidden fruit is actually far too fruit 
fruit to have been a fruit. It's called the Kanju Kanju no Mi, which literally translates as the fruit fruit fruit. I mentioned this one a lot simply because I love the name, but this was Charlotte Smoothie's original devil fruit, and it's tricky to figure out what, if anything, this fruit was actually meant to do. I mean, I assume that it was supposed to be a paramecia. Although if it was a Logia, I do greatly enjoy the thought of punching someone and just having them explode into lingonberries. And as much as Pokemon would have you believe otherwise, fruit are not animals, and so this probably wasn't a Zoan either. We do have an established Paramecia subclass for this sort of thing. Characters like Baby Five and Scratch Menapu both possess devil fruits that allow them to morph their bodies into a particular category of objects. And I guess a similar thing could have happened with the fruit fruit fruit. Smoothie's legs become lemons, arms become apricots, and her melons turn into, well, well literal melons. There is another option though, because the fruit 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 may also be a generation style Paramecia. A similar power to which was displayed by Charlotte Cracker, who could conjure and manipulate various types of delicious biscuit. So Smoothie could create all sorts of, I don't know, like, like fruit soldiers, maybe? I mean, yeah, why not? That wouldn't be out of place for Whole Cake Island at all. But as for why her powers were changed, I'd say it might be because they were a bit too close to Cracker's abilities and potentially even Katakuri's. Plus, it does suit her name a lot better. It's almost as if Oda took a sub-function of the original fruit, because Smoothie would have had the power to, for want of a better term, juice herself. And Oda hyper-focused in on that and thought, hey, what if we could juice everything? I think it makes Smoothie significantly more sinister than she would have been with the fruit, 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 because watching her squeeze that woman and that giraffe is genuinely one of the most horrifying experiences that I have ever had in One Piece. It made me feel legitimately bad for the woman who stabbed 100 men. And don't even get me started on how bad it made me feel for the giraffe. We never even found out how many men it stabbed. It really makes you think about priorities though. The idea that Big Mom purposely sought out all of these food-based devil fruit abilities and cursed her kids with them just to make sure that she gets fed on time. Meanwhile, you have someone like Kaido, whose entire life philosophy was, I like animals. Strong animals, but perhaps too strong though. Because Kaido's crew had not one, but two devil fruits removed from the series. The first of which is the original concept for Black Maria, who was supposed to be the user of a mighty Stegosaurus ancient Zoan fruit. Stegosaurus, by the way, was my favorite childhood dinosaur because I really liked the, uh, the spiky things on its back. The reason for the change here is probably obvious though, as Stegosaurus, whilst pretty <laughs> undeniably cool, does risk being more of the same when it comes to the Toby Ropo, who already had a Triceratops, a Pachycephalosaurus, and a meek early 20 Spinosaurus. Being realistic here, it also probably would have been quite a challenge for Oda to keep Black Maria as his alluring femme fatale whilst also being a Tronchosaur. And this process took quite a bit of time to settle because Black Maria went through a second devil fruit development where she was given the Obi Obi no Mi, meaning Sash Sash fruit, which was a Paramecia that probably functioned as a generator like Galdino and his wax, or as a body manipulation fruit very similar to Diamante's flag fruit. In fact, it probably would have been far too similar to the flag fruit. But the bigger problem here is that it was a Paramecia and you know, that doesn't quite mesh with Kaido's whole brand. So we have a problem to solve. The Stegosaurus, yes, it's on brand, but it's not sexy enough. Meanwhile, the Sash fruit, then that's plenty sexy, but not on brand, not on brand at all. So we need a middle ground. And with that in mind, we've decided to settle on drug taking Spider Woman. Black Maria's real devil fruit is tricky enough to understand for a casual reader as it is. In fact, most people probably don't remember its name, and if they do, they almost certainly can't pronounce it. Now, just to prove my point, Black Maria is the user of the Kuma Kuma no Mi model Rosam, Rosamigail, 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 Rosamigail Gravo Jelly. I'm really glad this change was made though. And one of the really cool things about this fruit is that the spider in question is actually the oldest animal that any Zoan fruit is based on. But a spider is not a crab. Inazuma almost was though. Originally he was given a crab Zoan, which to me looks so, so damn cool. And I'm quite sad that we never got to see this boss crab. This feels like a smoothie scenario. One where Oda had grand crab ideas with like powers to cut things because for some reason all fiction crabs can do that for some reason, cutting with the claws don't cut. So Oda, as he often does, decided to simplify and streamline the needs of the story, keeping the cutting ability, but cutting all of the extended crabby stuff. It's still a shame though, because he would fit right in with the animal theming of the Revolutionary Army. I mean, they already have a dragon, a koala, a crow, and even this delightful fellow named Bunny Joe. Now, obviously a crab is not the most powerful devil fruit that Oda had to cut, but before we get to the big reveal, let's go in the other direction. On the island of women, Luffy's first encounter 
was going to be with a domestic house cat because Marguerite's original concept was to be a black cat Zoan user, which does look quite cool and, and cat woman-y. But this is one of those situations where Oda's imagination got ahead of his storytelling. Marguerite being a devil fruit user would have created a big, big potential plot hole because the whole idea behind the Gorgon sisters is that they lied to the Kuja tribe about their devil fruit abilities, saying that they had slayed a Gorgon and received these curses as a result, as opposed to being force fed their curses whilst enslaved. But if Marguerite herself was a fruit user, then this whole story comes undone because Sandersonia and Marigold have Zoan fruits as well. So things probably would have played out like that Spider-Man meme. In the end, this change was quite inconsequential. I mean, Marguerite barely got enough screen time to showcase herself as it was. And I suspect the only thing that her black cat fruit would have accomplished is the creation of a series of awkward erections within the reader base. And speaking of that is a bizarrely smooth and appropriate transition into the most powerful and most forbidden of all of the forbidden devil fruits that Oda had to cut. And its name is the Ero Eronomi, which is the erotic, erotic fruit, which Etchiro Oda has stated that he has considered including on no less than 13 separate occasions, but was halted each and every time because it would have transformed One Piece from a fun action adventure into a harem comedy. And that's because this information came out when a reader asked Oda if he'd ever considered giving Luffy a different devil fruit. The answer to that, by the way, is no, absolutely not, you fool. In fact, according to both Romance Dawn one-shots, there was a point where either the Gomu Gomu no Mi was going to be the only devil fruit or the only type of devil fruit in the series, which grew from the Gomu tree. Now, because we've done this with everything else, we do need to examine how the Ero Ero no Mi was intended to function. Immediately, my thought is something similar to Jewelry Bonnie's powers, being able to transform people, but instead of manipulating their age, you manipulate them into their most erotic possible states. Or it's more of an environmental paramecia that conjures the most erotic possible atmosphere. And you know what, let's have an example of how this fruit could function. Something completely innocent like, say, um, like delivering a pizza. Now things ever gone weird when delivering a pizza. For this scenario, we're going to use Mr. Four because it was his lifelong dream to become a pizza delivery man. Not make pizzas, not own a pizza restaurant, just deliver them. And look, you know, there is something to be said for realistic expectations of life. But in this scenario, Mr. Four arrives at his delivery and is immediately targeted by the Ero Ero no Mi. So by the time that Nami opens the door, Mr. Four has been transformed into a hunky shirtless pizza bro who says, I'm here to deliver your pizza, which is topped with many euphemistic ingredients. And then Nami, who is also now affected by the powers of the Ero Ero no Mi replies, that's, that's good, I like pizza, leave it on the counter. But then the counter becomes Nami and the pizza becomes something that, that is not a pizza. That's how this fruit works and that's why it can never be a part of One Piece. Well, I mean, it, it can actually, because it is, it is actually part of One Piece. This fruit did manage to weasel its way into existence through Boa Hancock. The Ero Ero no Mi disguised itself cleverly with an M to become the Mero Mero no Mi. And overall, its powers were toned down a bit, but this fruit is still governed by desire. Or alternatively, your desire is governed by this fruit. It's like some sort of dodgy fruit election because I'm not quite sure who's governing who here. And Oda did continue to explore his Ero Ero concepts throughout the entirety of One Piece, just in much smaller chunks. For example, most recently, Doc Q of all people acquired a devil fruit that made Trafalgal canon, with Penguin and Shachi's immediately response being to lust after their captain. That is the only way that this devil fruit is allowed to exist. Split up into smaller parts because otherwise it would simply be too powerful and more importantly, too graphic to publish in Weekly Shonen Jump. And now you should use your powers to watch this next video because I know that you've not finished cleaning your room yet. So I'll see you there.